Praise the Lord. Today in our search, the scriptures we've studied on spiritual gifts. Um, if you have any question to ask based on what we studied from our search, the scriptures, can you signify by raising up your hand so that we give you the privilege of asking your question? Diversity or spiritual gifts. If you have any question to ask based on what we've studied from our side the scriptures. Okay, our brother. Another person? Okay. So you can come to the mic, please. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Um, whenever we read the scriptures, and I think we always emphasize this in this church, for us to have a better understanding of the scriptures, we should not just pick a verse of scriptures out of a Bible chapter. Out of, if you do that, you are, you know, you are disregarding the contents of that particular Bible passage, do you understand? And one of the methods we've been teaching in our church here, that for you to have the clarity of that particular verse, it's always advisable to read either two or three verses before that verse and two or three verses after that verse, so that you have the complete context, understanding of the contents of that verse that you are reading. Do you understand? So to enable us for that, I'll start rather from verse 26 so that we will understand. And, you know, this particular passage as well, those of us who have been at the mini conference, our Father in the Lord has really dead on this passage. So that makes my job easier as well. Praise the Lord. So I can always refer back to the, to the note from the Congress. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, if you look at that passage in, in Romans chapter 11, verse 26, no, that's why we always advise, so it's always good to come for Bible study, for all these uh, programs that are for that. You know, it's our, Bible, it's our Bible college. Some of you don't know. That's our Bible uh, university. This Bible study will come. These messages we are listening to from our Father in the Lord because it gives us understanding of the scriptures. And then when challenges come, it will be far, far much easier for you to give the right answer. Do you understand? Now, if you go back again to Romans chapter 11, where our brother have read, it says for, in verse 29, for the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. Now, the question is, who is this passage really talking about? Who are those this passage was referring to? Now, if you look at the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Romans, Paul the Apostle, writing that epistle, he was trying to attack, you know, a death with two particular subjects. He was dealing with the Jews on one hand, and also he was also dealing with the Gentiles on the other hand. In chapter 1, he brought conviction upon the Gentiles, letting them know that even though they are not Jews, they are still under the conviction and the wrath of God. Then in chapter 2 and chapter 3, he was not talking to the to the Jews, to the Jewish nation, who felt that, oh, for we, we are the seed of Abraham, we have the law, we have the oracle, we have the word of God, we have the privilege of being part of the Abrahamic covenant. We are the seed of Abraham. But Paul the Apostle now wrote this epistle to them as well, letting them know that the works of the law cannot justify them. They are, you know, they are good deeds. The law that they have, the oracles of God that through them the covenant came, that does not give them the justification. 
That's why in chapter 4, in that, you know, uh, from chapter 3, Nina talks about the redemption after bringing both the Jews and the Gentiles into condemnation. And all through that passage, he dealt with doctrine. Do you understand? And then in, from chapter 12 to the end of this episode, he was not talking about the Christian life. So as part of the doctrine, we now come to this chapter 11 that Paul the Apostle was talking about. For the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. Now let's go to verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, they shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away on godliness on from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. So you understand now, going back uh, to that particular passage, that actually this verse of scripture is talking about the Jews. It was referring to the, gent- the, the privileges that they had, the covenant relationship that they had. The, you know that through that lineage, the Jewish nation, we have the privilege of the world of redemption that was offered through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he was trying to tell them that that does not really mean that, oh, because you have that privilege, that you have that gift, that you have that, you know, that opportunity that God has given to you, that as a result of that, you will go to heaven automatically. No, not at all. He had to tell them because he said, God, for in verse 21, as it is written, verse 26, they shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away on godliness from Jacob. What was, where was Paul referring to? If you open your Bible to Psalm 14, this was a prophecy that was given by the Old Testament prophets themselves. And David the Samuel in Psalm 14, Psalm 14, I'll read verse 7 of Psalm 14. He says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. When the what now? The Lord. You see that? So he was looking at, he was, you know, the psalmist here was looking ahead. And that was what Paul was referring to. Because he is an student of the Old Testament. He understood the Old Testament very well. So he was referring to that prophecy. He says, when the Lord shall bring back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be what? Shall be glad. He says, the oh, that the salvation, salvation, that's what he's talking about. And that salvation is not obtained by works. No, it's the salvation that was provided through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is salvation through grace, by faith in the atonement of Christ, uh, in the atonement of Christ Jesus. But then he now said, as con- look at that in verse 27. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sin, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Do you see that? It's not, with, it's not talking to the... You know, remember, this epistle was written to the Romans. Do you understand? The church at Rome. And these are not Jewish people. These are Gentiles. And he was telling them, in verse 28 now, he has, he has referred them back to the covenant God had with Israel, that through them, the deliverer will come, but not, and that's the gospel. He now says, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake because of their own belief, but as touching the election. Do you see that? As touching the opportunity they had, as touching the privilege they had as a nation, Israel, that through them, this deliverer, Zion, the deliverer will come out of Zion. He now said, as touching the election, they are below for the Father's sake. That's why he now said, for the, call, for the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. That was what he was referring to. The privileges they have, the opportunities they have. It's not because of their unrighteousness. It's not because of the works of their hand that they have that privilege. No, it's because 
of the faithfulness of their fathers. It's because of the commitment, the consecration of their fathers, like Abraham. Abraham believed God. The Bible says, and it was counted unto him for what? For righteousness. So as a result of that, they had that privilege of the election. They had that privilege that out of Judah, the deliverer, our Savior, we call. And that's why Christ came through the lineage of David. Do you understand? It's not that's why the Bible says it's, it's the gift of God. It's not because of their own words, it's because of what God has determined. It's what because God has, you know, ordained before the beginning of the wife right from the beginning of the world in Genesis. When Adam and Eve fell, what, did, what was the promise? He says, and the seed of the woman. Do you understand? Shall bruise that. So God needed to fulfill that promise. God needed to fulfill that covenant. God needed to fulfill that promise that he has made right from Genesis. So that the children of Israel did not believe, does not hinder God from fulfilling his covenant. Do you understand? And how do we relate that today? The offer of salvation has been made to all men. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the son of God has been given for our salvation. But pastor, how about for those who don't believe? Will they be saved? No, they will not be saved. The offer has been made, but there is a requirement. If you must be saved, there must be that salvation through by faith, through grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. There must be faith to believe, faith to receive. So that you cannot just sit down, oh, that we've learned about spiritual gift now. So the calling of God, and you know, it's not for, it, that's not what the Bible is really talking about there. It's talking about the nation Israel. But the way you now come to the spiritual gift that we have learned today, do we see that the spiritual gift are without repentance? There is nothing like that in scriptures. All those that manifested the gift of God in their life. They were used by God. They were not enemies of God. They were people that have relationship with God. If you look at in, in Act of the Apostles, when Christ gave the promise, in Act of the Apostles, chapter 1, chapter 1 of Act of the Apostles, I will read verse 8. But ye shall receive power... After the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the heart. So you see there, that's the promise of the Holy Ghost that Christ made to the disciples. And this um, 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 the promise was not for strangers, because in chapter 2, in chapter 2, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were all. They were all. Who are these all the The 120 that remained. They were all in one accord. And the promise came unto them. And the gift of God came unto them. Now if you go back again to that Romans chapter 11, in verse 30, for as ye in time past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their what now? Unbelief. It was not writing to the Gentiles that now you, you have obtained mercy. You have obtained the gift. You have obtained the gift of salvation because of the unbelief of the, of the Jews. But then that does not mean that, that they don't have that privilege. God, they still have. It is true, the, Gent, the Jews, that we, the Gentiles, have the, the Savior. It's true, the Jews. So that's what Paul the Apostle was referring to there. But now we did not come to spiritual gift. When Paul was writing now to the church at Corinth, we need to understand that the church at Corinth is a spiritual church. It's a church that was founded, at, that had the pastoral influence of Paul the Apostle. 
And as a result of that, it, it, it was the church that was endued with spiritual gifts. And Paul wrote this epistle to, there were some clarifications he needed to make. There were some, you know, some things he needed to settle in that church. Because the church was a church, a spiritual church. They not thought, oh, we are spiritual. There is nothing, there is, you know, there is um, no need for, uh, at least we are manifesting the gift. We have the anointing. We have this and we have that. So Paul now had to now write to the church because in that church there was division, even though there are spiritual gifts. Even though there was the manifestation of spiritual gifts, there was division. There was disorderliness. There was fornication on Adolf. That somebody in that church went to be with his, father, with his father's wife. So Paul now had to write to the church to correct some of these things. And, one of, and we've been studying that in our side the scriptures. And when he now comes to the time of the spiritual gift, he now has to let them know that the purpose of spiritual gifts, you know, he now had to let them look at it in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, Brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Yes, the gifts were there. They had the gift. They were manifesting the gift. But then there were still some things that needed to be settled in their life. And that's why Paul had to write this epistle to correct some of them. Remember, in this episode, just last week, we studied that as well inside the scriptures, that some of them even died because they were partaking of the Lord's Supper unworthily. Some of them turned the Lord's Supper to a time that they can use to satisfy their hunger. Instead of eating from home, they were just taking it unworthily with envy in their heart, with jealousy in their heart, and as a result of that, some of them were dying on, on you know, untimely death. So Paul had to write this epistle to correct some of those things. Now the question is, Pastor, the spiritual gift we are learning now, does it not mean that, way? Well, is it without repentance? No. That's not, like I've said before, no. The spiritual gift we are talking about is a gift from God. You have to ask from the Lord to receive it. And if God is not your father, there is no way he can bestow his gift upon you. Like now, we have parents. The way you love your children at your, from your own bosom will be different from the way you love children from outside. And also, if a child comes to you and meets you on the road from outside, so, uh, 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 you are my daddy. You say, Daddy, since I've not adopted you, you'll be cautious. Is that not so? So that you'll not be charged for a uh, child, uh, what do you call it now? Eh? Give me the word now. Child word. Where are people now? You don't know the law. A child that does not belong to you, you now adopt it. Uh, now say, okay, you are taking care of the child without going through the legal processes. Child that, it will lead to child trafficking. It will lead to child, you can even be charged for child abuse. Do you understand? The same thing with God. You must have a relationship. It's a gift from God. But then we need to be careful. That we have the gift. Look at this church in Corinth. They have the gift, but all the immorality, all the evils were still going on in the church. We should not exalt the gift more than the giver. Do you understand that? Because that was what the church, that was the state, the church of Corinth, they fell into. And like Samson, Samson had the gift. Is that not so? But he lost it. After he committed immorality, and he did not know, he did not know about that. The Bible says he he shake himself as of the other time, not knowing that the Lord has what departed from him. I don't know many Christians today that they see, they are still depending on the gifts that they had two years ago, and their life is not right. And God has departed from them, and there is anger in their heart, there is envy in their, they still and they are still demonstrating gifts. They are still, you know, praying and casting out demons and binding devils. Examine your life. It is that's why Paul the Apostle in this same first Corinthians, he now told them in First Corinthians chapter 12. It is not the gift, it is the giver. That's what the Jews missed. They exhausted their privilege, the opportunity they had more than the giver. They were rebellious against God. They, were, they took pride in their religion. 
They took pride that, oh, we are the seed of Abraham. And when the Messiah came, they, never even, they, they didn't even know that the Messiah was around. They did not believe in him. They rejected him. And do you know what? They even crucified the Messiah. The Messiah. The Messiah. So that's why Paul the Apostle, when he now wrote to the church, he now told them in verse 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a what? A more excellent way. And that's what we talk about at the message of today. There's a more excellent way. It's not the gift. Because you can have the gift and still go to hell. Judas had the gift. Judas is carried Maybe you don't know. He had the gift. But he still went to hell. He had all the teaching. He still went to hell. Demas, he had the gift. He was in the missionary journey with Paul the Apostle. But then he still forsook Paul the Apostle. And he went away. We never heard of Demas again. There's a more excellent way we need to pursue after brethren. It's not the gift. There are many Christians, to, many assemblies to give. They demonstrate gifts. But the more excellent way, they forsook that way. The way of righteousness. The way of love. That's why the Lord is calling us to. Because we need to be careful. The Jews, they had the gift. Without repentance. There are some that have talent, even in the world today. They have, there are people that have talent. That's part, or you don't know that's part of gift as well. It's a gift. There are people that are talented in the world today. But then, are they using those things to glorify God? Not everybody. In that area where they are. So that's why we need to be careful. So we don't go into the state of the Jewish that had the gift. Remember the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. God, the people that God have endowed with gifts, with talents, natural talent, but they are not using it to glorify God. And yet they will still perish and go to hell with that talent. Do you understand? So don't have the gift without repentance. Have the gift with repentance, with righteousness, with law. Exhort the giver more than the gift. That's what the Lord is teaching us today. My brother, does that seem to answer your question? Let's rise up and commit ourselves to the answer of the Lord. Let's pray that the Lord will say we help us. That in your life, my brother, it is not the gift, it is the righteousness. Examine yourself. Still demonstrating the gift when the Lord himself has departed from you. When there is no love in your heart. When you are becoming rebellious, when you are becoming heady, disobedient, and you still say, Well, I have the gift. I have the gift. I can bind devil. You can bind devil and still go to hell. The devil you are binding you on not will wait for you in hell. Examine yourself. Don't exalt the gift more than the giver. Don't exalt the gift more than righteousness. For the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. Be careful so that you don't fall into that same state of the Jews. Examine yourself today. Examine your life. Examine your heart. The conscience. Is your conscience still picking you? Do you still have a tender conscience? Before you do something, do you have that conscience? The Spirit of God. Is the Spirit of God still shedding a blood in your heart? Or you are not becoming heavy? Examine yourself. Don't exalt the gift more than the giver. That was the mistake of the Jews. Let's pray that the Lord Himself will help us. That we exalt, we exalt the giver more than the gift. More than the gift. Spiritual gifts are there for us, but then we need to obtain it with repentance. With righteousness, with humility of heart, and with the purpose of glorifying and edifying the body of Christ. That's the purpose of spiritual gifts. To build up the body of Christ, not to destroy the body of Christ. 
If through your attitude you are destroying the body of Christ and you still say you have spiritual gift, examine yourself, my brother. Examine yourself, my sister. The purpose of that gift is to build the church of the living God. Are you building or you are pulling down? Are you building with the leaders or you are pulling down? You are sitting in your own corner there, doing your own thing, pulling down the work of God. And you say you have the gift of God. Examine yourself. Let's pray that the Lord Himself will, will search our lives. We help us to have our own gift will be used for the building of the church of the living God and the edification of the body of Christ. That's the purpose of the gift.